this isn't a well thought out presentation. Uh, it's in my humble opinion slash it's a bit of a rant. Um, or maybe some thoughts about things that could be done or are being done. Um, basically, I started building um, full web applications uh, built entirely in XQuery back in 2004. Um, and I haven't really stopped since. Um, not even to sort of take breath and try and improve the situation so much. Um, I think there are a few things that are wrong with building XQuery web apps. Um, I'm not saying doing it is wrong. I think that's great. And I think it's a way forward. Um, but I think there are things that can be improved. And if I upset anyone, please scream at me. Uh, if you want to throw things, that's cool as well. Uh, please cheer, cry, whatever, it's all good. So, um, so what makes, in my opinion, a good web framework? Um, obviously, it's an APR or a container, okay? Um, it should be light. You shouldn't have to change your code or conform to some sort of crazy style. Um, I think they discovered this in Java, whereby you used to have to implement interfaces and do all sorts of interesting things. Um, and then it all went back to the idea of just using POJOs, uh, which is just plain old Java objects. So your standard classes and you annotate things and you get rid of all your nasty constructor logic and it's just very, very clean, simple code um, that you can use anyway. And you strip the annotations out and you've still got working code. So um, I'm thinking plain old XCrew modules, okay, for a framework. So I don't want to frig with my XCrew code very much or write it into some framework or call particular functions. I just want to write X query functions um, because it's easy. Um, so there should be good separation of the business logics from the UI. Um, that goes for any sort of modern framework that has a view on it, OK? Um, something you need in the web badly, uh, URL mapping or rewriting. So someone comes to a URL, that's not necessarily what your script's called or whatever. You want to have a cool URI. like. I don't know, my car slash this part of my car slash the ID number for the part of the car or something like this. Again, okay, there should be fixed URIs. Um, so, I mean, the goal overall is to build reusable X3 web apps. And I'm not talking about Exist or Mark Logic or Zorba or anything. I want to build something in X3 that is plain old X3 modules that I can give to Zorba, I can give to Mark Logic or Exist, and it just works. Okay? That's, that's what I'm interested in. Um, these aren't necessarily the views of exist, or Mark Logic, or Sorba, or anyone. Okay, so um, why? Um, if you built a lot of things in XQuery, which a lot of you have, um, it bridges the impedance mismatch. I think this was a word I lifted out of a paper that 28 milliseconds did um, about the efficiency of building things in XQuery versus Java. Um, I completely agree with that. You work in one environment; it's one stack. Uh, it's all very, very easy. The only downside is it can be very easy to sort of muddy your business logic and your view code together and your transformation code. So you, you've got to be a little bit aware of that. Uh, but otherwise, I think it's a great environment. Um, <coughs> I would argue that it is suitable for enterprise scale application development. Um, Mark Logic will tell you it is because they sell an enterprise application server. Um, you just need the right tools and the right mindset to do it, okay? Um, X3 plus the web for me. Um, I can build things incredibly rapidly, quicker than I can crank out Spring, Hibernate, uh, JSF, whatever I want, any other sort of framework. Um, so for me, I try and work in a fairly agile way, so I like to build prototypes, show them to the customer, iterate on them, build more prototypes, and build it up, build it up, build it up. Um, so for me personally, it works well, and I want to see this going cool and drive it forward and do whatever we can. Um, so what's already available? Uh, so there are two main things around today. Uh, there's probably some others that I've missed or not seen or someone else can tell me. I'd love to hear about it. Um, first is XQMVC, so it's a full model view controller framework for XQuery. Uh, it's very heavyweight, um, but it's kind of impressive because it's almost by convention. So I can show you in a minute, but you basically stitch your model in this folder, your controller in this folder, your view in this folder, and it welds it together. So you've almost got plain XQuery. You just write some functions, and it does all the magic for you. Um, it supports URL reads, writing, it's a bit embryonic, but it kind of works. Um, runs on MarkLogic, mm, almost runs on Exist. We've got a few things to iron out there, but uh, it's in progress, right? Uh, it's X3 1.0 plus some vendor extensions. And the same caveat goes for Mustache. There are certain things you can't do in X3, like uh, dynamically evaluate queries. You want to put some X queries as a string and say a vowel, right? That's not in the X query spec yet. Maybe in 3.0. It's 
under debate. Um, so the way that these work is you have a library, one for exists and one for mark logic. All the processor stuff is abstracted into that. So if you wanted to implement this for Zorba, you just need to replace about eight functions, I think, in your own XQuery module with the Zorba equivalent. It should be pretty simple stuff to do. And the reason it is is because I went through and ripped out all the specifics and put them into modules. Um, so if people want to adopt these, great. Um, so when you say mustache, you're talking about Unijobs jobs. Mustache, I am talking about Unijobs jobs as mustache. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so mustache uh, is the opposite end of XQMVC. It's just uh, view and controller. So you define your view, you have a controller. Well, you don't even really have a controller, you define the view and the model really. Uh, mustache is the controller and it welds the stuff together for you. Um, the problem, in my opinion, is I mean, it comes out of some Ruby stuff and some other frameworks and it's kind of being ported into XQuery. Um, but the syntax that they use in your XHTML page, which you can imagine, is JSON. Basically, you insert blocks of JSON everywhere and then you give it some JSON data and it takes this JSON data and inserts it into the JSON bits in the page. Um, we're in an XML world running on XML databases and suddenly I have to convert things into that JSON. Uh, it's not impossible, we all have libraries to do it, but why? I think um, the plan is, uh, is to actually have a parse XML as well. Oh, cool. So it, the idea is that the mustache, designers like to use the mustache template. Yeah, I mean, it's simple. It's simple. the simplest thing in the world. And yeah. I'll, I'll show you some code examples in just a sec so you can see this stuff. Uh, it's fun. It's easy. Okay, so great. Um, it is invocable, so I mean, you have to prepare your stuff, call functions, push this stuff into their functions, and get the result back. So it's not transparent, it's not by convention. I'd say that sort of goes against what it's for, really. Um, but it does work, and it's quite nice. So every time, okay, so every time I start building New York's web app, this is what happens. Um, I try not to get my business logic and my view mixed up. Um, if I tightly couple it, the customer comes along and goes, oh, can we change the view? And then I have to find the bit of the XQuery function that has this bit of HTML in it that does this thing, and it's a pain in the ass. So I always try and create a render layer, which is usually XSLT, called from XQuery, or an XQuery identity transform that sort of skips over my intermediate model and generates my view. Uh, it doesn't always work. Um, so I don't use XQMVC, it's too heavy, the stash is too light. Um, there's nothing else really out there at the moment. Someone will tell me there is in a minute. Um, so tough for me. Um, so I abstract, I build my own templating framework. Um, I've built a few of these now. Um, each time I think I'm doing it better and will open source it, but never do. Um, I'm in the same situation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and I basically, my business logic generates some intermediate markup, right? And then I template it and I merge these things together. So I do merges, 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 and I get my page. I'll show you an example of that in a minute as well. So the code's going to come at the end. Um, so I worry about things like RESTful URIs and how best to do this, right? Because I think URIs are important. I really do. Um, and I don't, people who know how I do that, I don't drink a lot of the Ajax Kool-Aid. So I don't like things dynamically happening on pages just because I prefer to go to a physical URI that I can address and I can bookmark and I can, I can kind of do this thing, right? Um, so, I mean, we have URI rerouting. Uh, MarkLogic has URI rerouting. Uh, I guess Sorba do something with URIs where you can map them onto queries. I, I'm afraid I don't know Sorba very well, so please excuse me. Um, don't kick me out just yet. But, I mean, I don't think it's right. Um, at the moment, we have massive X query, and we intercept the request, and we do a lot of parsing in X query, like URIs and things, and then call the appropriate X query functions or scripts or whatever. Um, I'll show you some of this code. It's to, uh, to me, it's very hard to look at a huge block of X query and go, OK, so if I do this substring here and this substring here and then this else in here and this substring here, then these are the URIs that I'm extracting and these are the functions I'm calling. I think it should be more declarative, so I should just have an XML document that says, take this pattern of URI, call this function. Take this pattern of URI, call this function. Something very, very simple, like 10 lines, and that's all I need for my entire application. Um, I don't have the answers to some of these things, okay. Um, somebody pointed me at a project today called Rewrite. Um, it's, a new, it's a new no jobs project, I believe. Um, it's running on... Yeah, I think it's quite stale as well. Oh, it's stale? Yeah. Oh, great. Uh, <laughs> it's running on Bart logic. It's stale, don't pay any attention to that. Uh, but it is declarative, so you have a small XML vocabulary. 
Uh, it can be very small, and it very powerfully sort of redirects these things and does some pattern matching, and you're all very happy. You've got your URI rerouting data. Just um, to add, Norman has probably got the, the, the most up-to-date sort of approach to uh, rewriting in his GitHub. Just okay. throw that over the wall. So I'll, I'll keep on interrupting you. No, please do, because it makes it more easy for me. Um, so, the rewrite project, I think we can do better, and I'm going to propose what we can do at the end, and it's very simple. Uh, so, I find that every time I come and build another H3 web application, I need all this scaffolding. Um, I somehow don't like what's there, and I try and reinvent it, and then I never have the time to finish it because I have to get the customer requirements done, and then I end up with something that I can never quite open source because I never have the time to finish it. Uh, so I have all these little sort of things keeping me around. Um, oh, and all of this stuff is obviously, apart from the XQuery stuff, which is standards based, it's 1.0 compliant and doesn't have various vendor extensions in it, it's not standards based, so I can't give it to Zorba, I can't give it to MarkLogic. Um, this upsets me, I like sharing code with people because then they give me code. Hopefully. Or they run away and go, that code's horrible. Uh, either way. So, uh, <laughs> I have a dream. <laughs> Standards. Um, everyone knows about EXPath. We had a talk about EXPath. Um, I think, you know, it's a great project. I encourage everyone to get involved. I always sing the EXPath phrases as much as possible. Um, but I think the two things that I've been talking about, so templating, okay, separating the business logic from the view or the controller, however you want to do this, um, and the URI rereading, they're separate things. They don't have to be part of this like monstrous framework. They can be two very light separate things. Okay. Um, so I think they're independent, but I think how we solve them, they should be standardized. If that's EXPath or A, another thing where I can go on the web, find this thing, and everyone's using it, great. Uh, so the first thing, templating. Um, I think it gets complicated if you look at like how XQMVC and the start to do templates and they have different approaches, but I think they're overly complicated. Uh, I think just have some XML fragments here, some XML fragments here, or XHTML, have some IDs and just merge them. Right? And I'll show you an approach where I'm doing that. Um, just keep it simple, okay? Because then designers, like Jim was saying, with moustache can use this stuff because they just create divs, put IDs on them, and you can merge them, right? Um, where the IDs match, you merge. Uh, HTML tables are hard. So say your designer comes up with a table layout for your data, and somehow over here you've got to process your data with XQuery and then merge it into this table layout where they've styled it with inline CSS or all these horrible things that designers love to do. Uh, how do you say, right, this field here goes into this TRTD at this position in the table? Uh, it, it gets complicated. Um, at that level, I think the stash actually makes a lot of really good sense. And I'll show you an example of the stash. Um, in terms of URI rerouting, um, well, I've said it, I think it should be declarative and intuitive, so you shouldn't write code to do this stuff, you should just declare your intention. It should be easy to read, you just glance at it, yeah, I can see where my URIs are going. Um, if anybody knows Scala and Lyft, so Lyft Web is a framework for Scala, um, they have a really interesting approach to URI rerouting, it's very, very powerful, but it's not declarative, you literally write lines of Scala to do it, but the code is so simple it's almost like it's declarative, okay, so they're almost there, I think. Um, so, my approach that I came up with the other night when I was a bit sleepless, um, use XQuery 3.0 annotations on your functions to do this stuff. So, I just want to write plain XQuery functions, okay? So, why can't I write a function where I just put an annotation that says rest, listen, forget, okay? And this is my URI. And then when the REST server in whichever implementation you're using intercepts this stuff, it can call my function. Okay? I do my processing, I return my XML, my XHTML, whatever I want to return. I mean, I'm not talking about templating here, this is just URI reason. And then, if you want to do fancy things like IDs, I mean, this is a very lift webby kind of thing, so you put a token into the string, it pulls the value into here, I can take some action on it, do a lookup in the database, or buzz to whatever you want to do, some sort of transport. I mean, this is the sort of framework I would like to see for XQuery development, where I can just take functions, put some very simple annotations on them. I can look at my code and I can go, oh yeah, this one does this, this one does this. Um, so this syntax is already possible with XQuery 3.0. The interesting thing is in the implementation and the wiring and how you get it to listen out for these things. But it's not impossible. In fact, it's very, very possible, and I tend to do something about it. Uh, so this is my dream. 
and I'll show you why I've got here. So I'll show you some code, and then everyone will go, yay, code, and then I can go home. <laughs> so, uh, uh, is it, no, it doesn't look better on your screen. Okay. So, this is an existing instance, but it's not important. These are just collections, okay? So, uh, here's execute MVC, which we talked about. So, if you want to create an application execute with MZC, this is their layout. You stick the controller in here. So, we've got a little one in here called welcome. Okay, so it's quite simple. It's just, it's not bad, I mean, it's just a function. Okay, they've used some templating, they have their own templating language, so they're calling this templating function. You don't have to do that, whatever. And then, I mean, I'm not going to get into too much detail, but you have your model, so you find what you're going to pass around and how you're going to pass it around. Uh, it's pretty simple. I'm going to pass this kind of thing around. Okay, and then you have your views. So, and this is where your HTML goes, surprise. Um, they use this kind of map idea to pass things around. Uh, I don't really dig that, but maybe an X group three, I don't know. You're not in the map crowd either? No, I am. Oh, you are? Okay. I like more what they're doing in X group three, but what they've done here isn't quite maps, X group three maps, okay? Um, so that's kind of, I mean, very, very simplistically, you want an app, you create three files, you stick an app, a model, control view in those collections, framework wires it up for you, you're good to go. I mean, moustache is much simpler uh, insofar as, so here's the hello file. On the left, uh, this is your page. I mean, you can stick HTML in there as well. And then on the right is your JSON data that's going to be rendered into the page. So it's world will get put into there. Okay, fairly simple stuff. Um, so, I mean, that's a crap example, but I have another. So, how the hell do I use Chrome? <laughs> okay, I wasn't planning on a tiny screen resolution. Uh, one of these. I'll keep going. Okay, hang on, I'll play some of these down. No, this is all work, I'm afraid. <laughs> Exciting. Um, Oh, no, that's slashed off. <laughs> OK, so uh, no, that's the X-Crew script. That's lift web. God. OK, it's got to be one of these, right? I know it's here because I had it. Haven't I? Which one? This one. Yeah. Um, I was looking for the icon on the top, which is obviously never going to appear because the tabs are too small. Um, so, I mean, this is a more complicated example. Okay, so this is your page. Ooh, down to a little bit above here, so that's here. So that's your page. You've got some HTML. You whack a load of JSON in there. This is for Stosh, right? Then you generate some JSON data. It welds it together for you. So it's kind of lightweight. It sort of works, but you've got to go through this JSON page. Uh, I don't want to do that personally. But I think, like what I was saying, in tables where you've got, like, little things that you want to insert, very, very minimal, just like a little bit of JSON here and there is perfect. Um, so what else was I going to show? Oh, okay, yeah, so um, I was talking about like how controllers, uh, URI rerouting should be declarative. So I mean, this is an example of a URI router that I use in Exist. So we do things like, let's look at the path, does it end with HTML, did they ask the log out, okay. Uh, don't even know what we're doing here. Something else, uh, forwarding on to another part of the application. And we want to see if they want to retrieve something, we'll take some action, we'll dispatch to another script here. I, I think this thing becomes kind of impossible to read. Um, and that's a fairly simple one. So I have a really complicated one here that I've used for something. And apart from the functions at the top, I mean, this is my router. Ooh, um, this is my router here. And I just end up with lines like if it's log out to this, if it's this, to this, to this, to this, to this, to this. And okay, so here they're gonna do something with ontology, they're gonna upload it. Okay, well I mean these aren't too bad, you can read these ones. Uh, but some of them get a bit more complicated. Uh, probably further up. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is this stuff should be simple, right? And you should be able to look at it immediately go, this is what it does, it's obvious. Um, with that I have to search through it. When it goes wrong, 
it's a really pain, painful. Um, but I mean, this is what we're doing, right? So, I mean, that's kind of controls, right? And then the other thing that I was saying is templating. So, uh, let me get rid of some of these. So what I don't want, and this is the templating thing that I've created. It's very simple. I'm not going to release it as open source because I know Wolfgang's done something recently that's even better. Maybe he'll open source his. Um, <laughs> we'll see. Um, is I just want to create divs with IDs, right? So I've got a few divs in this page, like content footer. There's nothing in it. This is my main template, okay? I've got things like text links. Uh, there's a few others in here. Let's see them. Left menu, left manager menu, that kind of thing, right? And then my, this is a snippet for a page. It just matches on the divs, pulls those divs together, pulls those divs together, doesn't merge, okay? I can even have my X query generate some things. As long as they're in a tag with an ID equals on it, then I can merge that into my actual page, okay? So that's like a tall, tall thing. Yeah? Are you familiar with tall? No. Well, sorry. No? That's cool. No. That would be one to have a look at. I mean, the, the thing that does this template thing is basically just an identity transform in X query, right? So everybody knows identity transform. And it's like, that's it. That's all of the code. And it works for inserting templates into templates into templates, it recurses down the merge tree. And it's it's really simple. Um, is, it, is it just transclusion, or is it what if you're either already through uh, on the rules of the data? Uh, I haven't cracked the tables yet. So I don't know what to do with tables, which is why I was saying I think the start is a good fit when you get to the table level. Uh, but this is really good for like, I've got this block, I want to replace it here. Or I've got a piece of text in a block, I want to pull it out and put it into this block. But you start having like things inside things inside things, like nested tables, uh, it becomes very complicated. Um, and that's, that's basically it. I just wanted to have a little bit of a moment about X query frameworks. Um, throw some ideas out there. And basically, just show that slide. Um, I'm really sorry, you have to hurry because we have one I'm job done. left. And it's, I'm uh, kind of worried that we get kicked out. Okay, I'm finished. So, so, so you don't have to quit right now. Just oh, that's cool, I was at the end. Okay. Literally last at the end.